watch a lot of porn for work. <laughs> it might be while the coffee is still brewing or while I'm on the bus crossing Brooklyn on my way to the office, or by the time I sit down at my desk and open up my laptop, I've seen some things. It could be forums full of fetishists talking about their favorite hentai, or people in my inbox telling me why things like blueberries and slime and airplanes turn them on. By noon on most days, my browser history is full of these not safe for work websites. It's better than coffee, really. <laughs> in the winter of 2017, I was still building out my B as a tech and sex journalist at Motherboard, Vice's science and technology outlet. I was looking at all the ways that things like culture and sexuality and porn intersect with industries like machine learning and AI. In other words, I was in the right place at the right time when deep fakes showed up. Before today, many of you have probably already heard of deep fakes. What you might have also heard is that you should be worried about them. But let me back up a bit. Deep fakes is a portmanteau for deep learning and fake. It's become the word for these algorithmically generated face swapped videos, like this one of Elon Musk as Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> it's also become a buzzword for the misinformation apocalypse. If anyone can put someone else's face on someone else's body in an environment they were never in, then what does that mean for our concepts of things like truth and reality? If you've been paying attention to headlines about deepfakes in the last two years, you might think that the world is not ending from climate change or economic collapse, but from these AI face swapped videos. But in the winter of 2017, when we first found deepfakes being used, it was just some guy's Reddit username. He was someone who was posting these creations of his to a forum where people were already posting women's faces onto porn performers' bodies is in still images using Photoshop. Now, what these guys were doing was already objectifying and gross, but it was nothing new. People have been doing that for way before the invention of Photoshop. But what Deepfakes was doing was something very different. His creations moved, smiled, winced, and fucked. One of them was a video of a woman, scantily clad, lying on a bed, waving a sex toy around. She had Gal Gadot's face. Another was a video of a woman who looked a lot like Taylor Swift having sex with a man whose face was obscured. Now, these weren't them. These weren't real sex tapes of celebrities, but they were their faces pasted onto someone else using an algorithm. And I knew that no one in them, not the porn performer whose work was being used or the women whose faces were being stolen, had given their consent for this use of their likenesses. And if this one guy on Reddit could do this, then what was stopping anyone from doing this to anyone they know? Now, I am one of the only, or maybe the only journalists that I've ever heard of that's talked directly to the man who brought this technology into the world. Like I said, in 2017, he was just some guy posting his creations onto Reddit. So I sent him a message, and I said, hi, have you thought about the implications of this and how it might actually be harmful to women? He told me he's just a programmer interested in machine learning. This is what he said. Every technology can be used with bad motivation, and it's impossible to stop that. I don't really think my algorithm is very different from the technology used to recreate Paul Walker in Fast and Furious movies. I don't think it's a bad thing for more average people to engage in machine learning research. And some of you may be thinking the same thing. What's the harm in practicing coding, programming an algorithm, and using images that are already freely available on the internet? And so what if it's porn? Scarlett Johansson is obviously a famous celebrity. She's also a wealthy white woman with plenty of social clout. She was a very popular early subject of deepfakes porn. 
she's also not optimistic about combating them. In 2018, she told the Washington Post, I think it's a useless pursuit legally because the internet is a vast wormhole of darkness that eats itself. This is Scarlett Johansson's words, not mine. Now, celebrities like Scarlett have the same rights to things like bodily autonomy and to be free from harassment online, but they also have legal teams and agents and tons of adoring fans on their sides. So I want to tell you about Noelle. Noelle is a young woman living in Australia. She's not famous, not a celebrity, just like you or I. And a few years ago, when she was 18, she did a reverse image search of one of her own selfies just out of curiosity. What she found were pages and pages of places where people had photoshopped her face onto porn, were trying to find out her real name, hack her Facebook, in that moment, Noelle's life completely changed. She started doing the only thing that she knew how to do, which was contact these webmasters one by one and ask them to take her images off of their websites. Some of them did, and some of them didn't. Most of them did not. One of them told her that he, she needed to send him nudes in exchange for getting her face off his website. So, Noelle started speaking out. She started talking publicly about how people are being targeted by image-based abuse and how there's little to do to stop it. And she was met with more hatred and harassment from the public. People said, look at how she dresses. She should take it as a compliment. No, Noelle has been dealing with this for years. So you can imagine the escalation and abuse when it went from stolen selfies posted onto still images to something like deepfakes, where it looked like she was in sex scenes. I asked Noelle if she's ever wondered, why her? She's not a celebrity. Why was she targeted for deepfakes? This is what she told me. I think they targeted me as a form of fetishization of me and my body type and maybe the fact that I am, you know, just an ordinary woman. Targets of deepfakes say that it does not matter intellectually that they know the images are fake. It feels like a violation. It feels like hundreds of people have seen them having sex on the internet with a stranger. It feels real. Targets of deepfakes also share three common threads when I research them for my work. They are targeted by no fault of their own. When they try to change their situation, they have little to no legal power to stop it. And they, there's nothing they can do once they're out there. Now, Noelle is not one to be deterred. She spent the last seven years fighting against image-based abuse and changing the laws in Australia, and she did. But here in the States, the legal recourse for victims of image-based abuse are still insufficient. Virginia is actually one of the few states that has uh, revenge porn laws that were recently expanded to cover manipulated imagery. Since 2014, it's been a crime to spread non-consensual porn, which means porn intended to harass or coerce, and that's punishable by up to a year in jail or thousands of dollars in fines. And just this past year, that was expanded to include deepfakes. But it's hard to sue someone when you don't know who they are, when they're hiding behind these anonymous usernames online, when they're on websites around the world. Legal experts also say that it's difficult to create laws around deepfakes without stifling other rights online. A lot of these laws that are in the works right now fail to define very subjective terms like humiliation. Should someone go to jail for a year and be fined thousands of dollars because they created a deep fake that makes the founder of Facebook look bad or embarrasses the president? There are also a lot of laws in the works around deep fakes used for political meddling. In California, there's a law right now where it is a crime to create a deep fake to influence voters or manipulate an election uh, or damage a candidate's reputation. 
And since we found the technology being used, that's where the focus went. It went from the women who were being harassed straight to politics almost immediately. It was 2017, it was right after a presidential election, and we learned the hard way that things like memes and misinformation had the power to sway our democracy. It's just where people's minds went. But the focus on politics and power immediately left behind the real victims of deepfakes. Women, porn performers, all of us. Since its inception, this technology has raced ahead at a breakneck pace. It used to be that you needed hundreds of images of someone's face and some pretty good computing power and some programming knowledge to create a convincing deepfake. Now you can do it by handing someone a few bucks over the internet and they'll make one for you with a video of your target the length of an Instagram story. Researchers are also doing it with one or two images. While Congress wrings its hands about deepfakes used in politics, people are still trading these data sets online, experimenting with women's bodies, selling them to people with fetishes to fulfill or grudges against a woman in their life. When we first started reporting on this technology, it, it was uh, mostly focused on the women that were being harassed and how they might be targeted by vengeful exes or obsessive fans, or really anyone who knew them and had enough images of them. And since then, we've also seen a whole cottage industry crop up where people are trying to detect and prevent deep fakes from being used maliciously. Facebook and Google are in the fight against deep fakes, and government defense agencies are in it too. But deep fakes aren't a technological problem. No amount of watermarking videos or forensic detection techniques will solve the fears we have about them. Defakes are a societal problem. And if we look back at its origins and beyond, that becomes very clear. Now, when we first reported on it, again, it was just about the ordinary women who were being harassed, but that focus is way behind now, and we need to bring it back. Politicians have to stop harping on how they might lose an election to a harmful deep fake and start giving a voice to the marginalized. And the rest of us will just have to start thinking twice before hitting the share button. <laughs>